That was really sad. Episode 4 of Hard Knocks is in the books. Let's talk about what happened in this video. I'll be reacting to the episode, giving you guys my general takeaways from the episode and telling you guys what my favorite scenes were. And my god, man, that was by far the saddest episode of the series. I know that Hard Knocks always has some sad moments because it's showing the brutal realities of what life in the NFL is like for some of the back of the roster guys. Guys that were 7th round picks, 6th round picks, UDFAs that don't really have you know, much staying power in the NFL. This series really shines a light on what they're like behind the scenes, who they are as people, you know, what their everyday struggle is kind of like. In this episode, they shined a light on Adrian Colbert, our backup safety that unfortunately got cut, and Ian Wheeler, uh, backup running back, that did get placed in the IR, as we saw in this episode. So he will be getting, you know, money from the Bears this year, and he will be on the roster. So at least that's good that he can learn the playbook and you know, get paid by the Bears and come back, you know, healthy next year to hopefully, you know, get a chance to crack the Bears 53-man roster. But it was so sad, man, like seeing their stories and especially knowing that a lot of these guys were cut, like especially Adrian Colbert, where he seems like such a cool, chill guy, just super thankful to even be alive because we saw in this episode that he actually got hit by a car going, I believe, 50 miles per hour or something when he was a kid riding his bicycle and miraculously he survived that, was in a coma for two weeks pretty crazy stuff so obviously he's super thankful just to be alive every single day they talked about him you know trying to ground himself and you know all the things he does to do that so I thought his story was super interesting to listen to and again it's just so sad knowing that he was cut after this I'm sure we'll see that in the next episode if the Bears want to show that but he's been on eight different teams during his NFL career so far so changing teams basically every single year right that's got to be tough on him and his family not sure if he has you know wife or anything wife or kids but you know definitely difficult to be moving around like that every single year and I really wish he could have made it in because he made you know some big time plays in training camp I'm um, also in that last preseason game you guys saw the one-handed you know PBU where he basically prevented a touchdown I thought that might earn him a you know spot on the roster but unfortunately he did not make it and he could be coming back on practice squad I think the Bears are gonna try to bring him back on practice squad so you know, that would be pretty cool, but yeah, that was super sad, you know, hearing his story, knowing that he was going to be cut, you know, pretty soon. Talking about Ian Wheeler, his story was even more sad in some ways, but also a little bit less sad in the sense that he at least gets a redshirt year with the Chicago Bears, right? Like where he is getting money, he's getting paid by them, he gets to learn the playbook and just get better mentally, really watch a lot of film and become smarter as a football player and then come back ready to go next year, hopefully healthy and ready to crack the Bears, you know, 53-man roster. And I love the speech that Ryan Poles kind of gave him at the end about staying sharp mentally. That's the hardest part when you are injured is staying sharp mentally. Obviously, physically, you can heal from anything, but sometimes mentally, it's a lot harder to stay on top of things, really have the same hunger that you had when you were on the football field that is super difficult. And Ryan Poles knows it best, right? Like Ryan Poles is a guy that has been cut from NFL rosters. He's gotten that call from the GM where they told him, you're cut, you're out of here. So I think it's really cool that we have a human being like Ryan Poles that can empathize with these players that are at, at the back of the roster because he's been there himself. He was the guy that was being cut, so he knows all the emotions that players feel during these moments. And I like that Ryan Poles told Ian Wheeler that if he ever needs somebody to talk to, to cry to, he's going to be there for him, which I don't think many GMs would say that, man. Like, Say what you want about Ryan Poles. He's a fantastic general manager, but he is a fantastic human being as well. And I'm really proud that we have a human being like that really representing the Chicago Bears and, you know, being the top guy in charge as general manager. So hats off to Ryan Poles, man, for being that, you know, empathetic and, and really setting a standard culturally for the organization. Like the Chicago Bears should be a place where players want to go to because people care about each other here. Um, your GM is going to treat you with respect and look out for you the best he can. Obviously, he still has a job to do to build the best 53-man roster to win the Chicago Bears a Super Bowl, but he's not going to be a bad human towards you. Like He's going to generally care about you, genuinely care about you, rather, and I think a lot of players would like that, you know, to come here and be a part of that. So, you know, really cool spotlight on Ryan Poles there at the end, and you know, showing how he conducts conversations, these difficult conversations, 
And the saddest part of the episode by far was seeing Ian Wheeler's mom's reaction to him go down with that torn ACL and getting that news and then hugging him at the end, which a mom's hug, man, is the most powerful thing in the world. Like even speaking from experience, whenever you're feeling down, if you have your mom in your life, man, definitely be sure to hug them because those are the best types of hugs. Um, but it was really cool to see, you know, Ian Wheeler connecting with his mom there and super sad, obviously, because Ian Wheeler knew that he was done for the season and maybe even questioning if he's going to have what it takes to make it in the NFL because it's so difficult to, you know, make a roster being a UDFA and not getting this playing time now. It's going to be so hard for him to crack a roster, but he still has a bright future ahead of him regardless. Like either he's going to play in the NFL or he's going to become a doctor and save lives. So either way, man, like it's looking good for him in his future. So, you know, really cool you know, spotlight on both Ian Wheeler and Adrian Colbert, guys that are back of the roster players that you don't really hear too much about, but it was cool to hear their stories. He also talked a lot about Vilas Jones in this episode and kind of showing his progression into becoming a running back. I thought that was pretty cool. The Bears assistant coaches, Jennifer King and um, Chad Morton also had a lot of screen time in this episode. I thought they looked pretty good in this episode, you know, really coaching the running backs up pretty hard. And I'm rooting for Vilas Jones, man. Like I know he made the 53 man roster, so he had a happy ending, you know, to this series. And hopefully he has a happy ending to his NFL career, you know, and actually turns his career around. But I'm definitely rooting for him because as you guys saw, you know, with that game footage, Velas is ridiculously fast. I mean, he has the type of acceleration that players in video games have. He just has to be smart with the football and not turn the ball over and make the simple mistakes. But if Velas turns it around, like that's going to be a great thing for the Chicago Bears team because we need a kickoff returner, obviously, and he's the main guy we have at this point in time. So you know, hopefully Velas can show something this season. I thought it was also pretty cool to see that segment about uh, Tyson Bajan's dad, Travis Bajan, who is a professional arm wrestler. And we saw one of his arm wrestling matches in this episode where he had to come back, man. Like he was down for a good amount of time. I thought he was going to lose that, but he somehow, you know, stays in there at the very end, gets his opponent down. And that was super cool because I never actually watched arm wrestling like that. So it definitely was pretty cool seeing the vibes in that bar, seeing how excited everybody was, how pumped up they were, and seeing Tyson Bates' reaction to his dad winning that match was, you know, pretty damn cool. And um, I also thought it was pretty cool how at the end of this episode, kind of near the end, they showed Austin Reed and him, you know, talking to the Bears coaches, realizing that he's probably going to be cut, right? Because he's not beating out Caleb Williams or Tyson Bajant. Realizing he's probably going to be cut, he said to Shane Waldron, no matter what happens, thank you for investing in me. I thought that was super cool and super classy of Austin Reed to say that. And he also said, you know, near the end of that game, the third preseason game, he told all the Bears players that, hey, they're going to remember the 2024 preseason Bears when they talk about the greatest teams of all time. Okay, the 1985 Bears, the Patriots dynasties, the Dolphins back in the day. They're going to talk about this team with those teams because we were so damn dominant in preseason this year, which is a pretty funny moment to hear Austin Reed say that to all of his fellow Bears players that were probably going to be cut pretty soon. But it was cool to see them make the most of these moments and really you know, make these memories. Because again, for a lot of these players, they probably are never going to be playing football ever again it's pretty sad when you realize that but hey the nfl is a brutal brutal business as we're well aware of at this point and you really just got to make the most out of the time you have in this league leave your comments down below guys what you guys think about this episode what were your favorite scenes did you guys cry during any scenes i know a lot of people did i might have cried also during that moment where ian wheeler was hugging his mom that was super super cool but yeah leave your comments down below there's one more episode releasing next week where they're probably going to be showing some players getting cut, so that's going to be even more sad if they do end up showing that. I know the Jets did not show that last year, so we'll see what the Bears end up doing. If they don't show that, I'm sure they'll show footage of the players that did make the roster gain the news that they did make the roster. That's going to be pretty exciting, pretty happy, uplifting stuff. But yeah, leave your comments down below, guys. As always, bear down.